Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 26th January 2022. So first of all, I wish you a very happy Republic Day to all of you. So from today onwards, we are going to have a new approach of our Hindu analysis. So daily one quote will be discussed because so those quotes will be important from our UPSC point of view even when you are writing your mains answer and even in your essay those quotes are very important and many students are mainly asking me like so how to prepare quotes okay so for that daily one quote will be discussed and if you want you can make a note of that quotes in a separate book because there will be some important areas uh, which is a favorite areas of upsc like gender equality education poverty hunger environment so regarding those topics daily we will be having one quote discussion and if you watch this video completely then you will be seeing uh, what is a change that you are coming up and if there is any suggestions from your side so please give me your suggestions in uh, in comment box so in this lecture we are going to discuss uh, six topics so first and second topic it is regarding our republic day and this will be important from our polity point of view and even some historical aspects that i am going to discuss in regard in this topic and second third topic it is regarding chakmas and hamas okay of arunachal pradesh so actually there is issue which is going on regarding this uh, this groups of chakmas in arunachal pradesh regarding citizenship so that is very important and next topic it is regarding low emissions growth so actually you know that recently cop 26 which mainly held in glasgow so in that cop 26 our prime minister said that india it is going to achieve carbon neutrality by 2070 so to achieve this goal so we need to have some short term medium term and long term goals so that is the thing which mainly discussed in this article and this topic is important from our environment and ecology and next topic it is regarding ias cadre rules already this topic it is in news from last one week so again we have to do our uh, revision and next topic it is regarding padma shri awards padma vibhushan padma bhushan and padma shri awards so these are six topics now we are going to have our discussion and first let us start our discussion with a quote so this quote it is regarding gender equality so the quote says that a gender equal society would be one where the world gender does not exist where everyone can be themselves so this quote says that what is the meaning of gender equal society so it is talking about gender equal society so gender equal society it would be where world okay it would be where the world so in this gender equal society there is a no existence of the word gender so where everyone can be themselves so what is this gender equality first of all if you are talking about this gender equality gender equality it is nothing but when people of all genders per se like uh, male and as well as female they have equal rights they have equal responsibilities and they will be having equal opportunities so in this way here gender equality mainly prevents violence against women children right so you are seeing there are number of cases of violence against women daily and national crime record bureau is also giving many reports regarding this gender based violence domestic violence etc so actually this gender equality is very much important for our economic prosperity for economic prosperity of a country a gender equality is also very very important okay so in this gender equal society here women mainly enjoys the rights as par with men it is equal with the men and even gender equality is a one of the human right as well okay so this is uh, some explanation regarding this gender equality okay so you can use this type of quotes when you are writing answer regarding this gender equality or uh, even women empowerment related uh, related questions as well so now let us try to see first topic title says why republic day is celebrated so you all know that in your school days you might have gone to your schools on this republic day where flag is hoisted by your headmaster or principal and i i also recall that event when i am i am doing this uh, 
a PDF in the morning. Okay, I went back to my school days and I got some memories where I used to participate in electrocutions uh, and some debates regarding this uh, Republic Day. Okay, so first of all, you need to know what is uh, this Republic Day and why we are celebrating this Republic Day. As a new PSC aspirant and future bureaucrats, you need to know what is the history and what is the origin of this Republic Day, right? And this topic is important from your history and even from your polity point of view. So we are talking about Republic. So now today we are celebrating this Republic Day. So in this Republic Day, the word Republic is there, right? So where can you see this word Republic? So where you can see this word Republic? So, in our preamble of our constitution, preamble is nothing but preface, right? So, in the preface of our constitution, in preamble of our constitution, we can see this word republic which is present. So, preamble of our con Indian constitution which mainly declares that India as a republic. So, now let us try to see preamble and let us try to find out where is this word republic written. So, this is a preamble of constitution of India. It says that we, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic and republic. Actually, in 2021 prelims, one question appeared regarding this sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. So, which are the words which are added after this 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act? So, this is the one important prelims based question. So, in this way also you can express prelims based questions. Okay. And if you come back. So, over in socialist, secular, democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic and political justice, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status, equality of opportunity, and to promote among all them fraternity. Fraternity is nothing but feeling of brotherhood. And assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constant assembly this 26th of November 1949. So it mean this date mainly says that hereby adopt, enact and give to ourselves this constitution. So this is our preamble. So, our preamble mainly says that is republic word which is mainly seen in our preamble of the constitution. So, as you all know, so every year republic day is celebrated on 26th January. So, why we are celebrating this? Mainly to commemorate the adoption of Indian constitution. Actually, our Indian constitution which came into effect on this day that is January 26th in 1950. As you all know, our constitution it is the supreme law of land and all citizens they need to abide by it that is they need to follow this constitution so here if you are talking about this 2022 so in this 2022 you are celebrating this 73rd republic day to commemorate this azadi ka amrit mahotsav that is this is 75th year of our independence okay and what happened in this azadi ka amrit mahotsav event uh, which is mainly focusing to connect youth to our rich cultural heritage. So now let us go back to origin of this Republic Day. So what is the origin? So regarding this origin, you need to know about four important things. So first and the foremost thing here is when India became independent. So already you know that India got independence in year 1947. Okay, on 15th August 1947, we got our independence. So, at the time of independence, we do not have any constitution. But you might be getting a doubt like, so without constitution, how we went for governing the people at that time? So, at that time, we was mainly dependent upon this Government of India Act of 1935. So, before our constitution which came into existence, so we mainly followed this Government of India Act of 1935 until adoption of our constitution in year 1950. Okay. So, at that time, Okay, until our adoption of our constitution till 1950. So, King George VI, he was the head. Okay. And actually, if you are talking about the seeds of this, uh, seeds of this Republic nation was, was sown by our Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in Lahore session of INC. That is in Indian National Congress Lahore session. 
So Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru came up with the idea of this Indian Republic nation. So this is the first important thing that you need to remember regarding traces of origin of this republic. So if you are talking about this image, so I did a lot of research uh, to incorporate different images such that it will be helpful for you in pictographic memory as well. So this is the one image regarding this Lahore session of INC. So here you can see our Jawaharlal Nehruji. The seeds of this Republic nation were disseminated at this Lahore conference of INC, that is Indian National Congress in year 1929 itself. So why that session was very much famous? So one important thing I want to share here is, so there are different sessions, Tripura session, Lahore session. So you have to know the who was the president of that session and what is the importance of those sessions as well because that will be very much important from your prelims point of view because we can't predict UPSC, right? And this Lahore session was held under administration of our Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, okay? And what happened? So in that session, they mainly took an oath to mark January 26th as Independence Day to march towards realizing the vision of absolute independence from British. Okay, later on, in 26th, uh, on 26th January 1930, they mainly observed as a Purna Swaraj, okay? And they also unflirted tricolor flag, okay? And this is about first incident regarding this origin of Republic Day. And second one, it is regarding this cabinet mission. So as you all know, cabinet mission mainly came to India. And the important um, idea behind this cabinet mission plan, it is to discuss to transfer of power from British government to Indian government, okay, Indian leadership. So cabinet mission mainly came into India to discuss regarding the transfer of power from British government to Indian leadership. And the important mission of this, important mission which mainly comprised of three cabinet ministers of English government. So these three members are very important from your prelims point of view. First one is Lawrence, Sir Patrick Lawrence. Sir Stafford Cripps and next one is Admiral Alexander. So these were the three cabinet ministers of English uh, government. And if you're talking about objectives of this mission, it is mainly to draw constitution of independent India. And also uh, important mission it is to make arrangements for interim government. So these are the some important mission or objectives of this mission. And if you're talking about some recommendations of this cabinet mission, so they propose that Union of India will deal with defense, foreign affairs and communications. Okay. So Union of India, it mainly deals with three important items like defense, foreign affairs and communications. And this mission also recommended that an undivided India and turn down the Muslim League demanded for separate Pakistan. Okay. It mainly recommended for undivided India, but Muslim League demanded for separate Pakistan and here recommendations also provided for formation of constituent assembly okay formation of constituent assembly as well and third important thing it is regarding constituent assembly meetings so this is one of the image regarding this constituent assembly of India so here you can see our Sardar Vallabhabhai Patel okay so this is one image regarding this constituent assembly of India. So at that time, how was our constituent assembly? If you see this image, then you will be getting some idea. So if you're talking about our constituent assembly, it mainly uh, formed as a consequence of discussions between Indian leaders and as well as members of British cabinet mission. And the first meeting held in 1946 on December 9th. And the important purpose of assembly it is it was mainly to present India a constitution, okay? And this constitution it would serve as a lasting principle. And because of this, they mainly selected a number of committees to explore the projected constitution. And in this constitution assembly, they went for discussions, debates, and they revised a number of times before Indian constitution was confirmed, okay? And fourth important thing here is con when this constitution came into power. So this is the newspaper at that time of adoption of our constitution. Okay. So here the title of this newspaper article says that India independent, India independent British rule ends. So this is in the Hindustan times. So we are talking about when our constitution came into picture. So India became free 
in year 1947 that means india got independence on 15th august 1947 but we enjoyed true strength of independence on january 26 1950 so finally our constitution came into force on january 26 1950 so then onwards we enjoyed the real strength of independence so constitution gave indian citizens the power to administer themselves and opting for our own government okay so after we came up with constitution our first president of india was dr rajendra prasad okay and now let us try to talk about what is the importance of this republic day and why we need to celebrate this in republic day so as you all know although we got independence in on uh, 19 uh, january 15 1947 so we enjoyed the real or true spirit of independence on this january 26 1950 on this day finally our constitution came into force right on this day on this day india mainly shed the last relic of colonial system and we became sovereign democratic republic okay we came we became sovereign democratic republic so this is the question that mainly asked in 2021 okay 2021 prelims regarding this preamble question So now you might be having one doubt again. What is sovereign? What is democratic? And what is republic? Sovereign means nothing but we, we that is India. India is neither a dependency or any dominion. Okay, it is not a dem not a dependency or not a dominion of any other nation. But from now, India is a demo is a independent state. Okay, there is no authority which is above. So now India it is free to conduct its own its own affairs. So this is the meaning of sovereign. Sovereign means India it is not a dependency, or India it is not a dominion of any other nation. India it is an independent independent state, and there is no authority which is above it. So we can go for conducting of our affairs. And this one is democratic. Democratic means it is mainly based on doctrine of power sovereignty. so here it mainly says that the supreme power is vested within the people or by the people and if you're talking about republic republic means india has elected head who is elected head here that is president he is elected indirectly for a fixed period of 5 years republic means nothing but we are, we had our elected head called as president and this president will be elected indirectly for a fixed period of tenure that is 5 years so this is the meaning of what is a sovereign democratic and republic and now let us try to see some more points regarding importance of this republic day so the day it is an occasion to commemorate the values of our democracy and republic and we need to reaffirm our commitment to liberty fraternity equality across our society and among all our citizens and the day mainly celebrates the desire of huge nation that wanted to be governed through one single constitution okay and even before this uh, constitution came into existence some provisions of constitution which mainly ca- came into power before this date so those provisions like citizenship elections provincial parliament temporary and transitional powers okay so these are mainly given in some articles So this is a gist of this topic, and I hope you got some idea regarding why we celebrate this Republic Day, and what is the history regarding origin of this Republic Day. Okay, now let us move on to next topic. So this topic is also regarding Republic Day, but why I selected this topic because if you see the author of this article, ah, uh, this article which is made written by this Om Birla, he is a present speaker of our Lok Sabha. so if you are selecting any editorial to read so please see the author as well so author will be also very important so again this article will be important from our polity point of view which mainly comes in a gs paper too so title says a festival to salute india's vibrant democracy so this article which gave much more insights regarding this republic day so now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail so title says that a festival to salute a festival to salute india's vibrant democracy so if we are talking about central theme it mainly says that the republic day this year is the time when citizens of india must rededicate 
rededicate themselves for fulfilling their duties okay so it is talking about duties of people so now let us try to see what author tries to stay say so if we are talking about introduction author says that republic day it is not only an occasion to take pride in our identity as indians but this republic day it is also an occasion for the citizens of our country to reiterate our resolve to promote equality and brotherhood in the country so this republic day it is not just an occasion to celebrate our pride in our identity as our indians but but here people also have the duty to reiterate our resolve to promote equality so we need to focus on promotion of equality and the brotherhood in the country so the constitution had been our guiding force in the journey of the nation to a mature democracy so to make india as a mature democracy constitution is one of the guiding force already you know that our constitution is a supreme law of land so constitution is acting as one of the guide okay one of the guide which is mainly helpful for journey journey of our nation as a mature democracy among among the nations so this is our constitution of india so if you are talking about drafting of our constitution so the task of drafting of constitution of india which mainly assigned to seven member committee and this committee which is mainly chaired by our b r ambedkar okay so after the formulation or establishment of this seven member committee regarding regarding this drafting of our indian constitution the constituent assembly undertook some intensive deliberations over a period of about 2 year 11 months and 18 days and in this time they went for 11 sessions and they went for detailed discussions debates and finally we adopted our constitution on november 26 1949 so these are the seven members of 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 uh, committee which is mainly which was mainly drafted this indian constitution so chair person is our b r ambedkar okay and if you are talking about our constituent assembly so this is our image of our constituent assembly so what was the important role which is mainly placed uh, played by this uh, constituent assembly so our constituent assembly which mainly played a dual role after independence after independence our constituent assembly which mainly played a dual role okay and here this constituent assembly which is which was mainly given an important task regarding our nation building so two important task which are mainly performed by our constituent assembly was the first one here is the task of framing of our constitution so first task here it is regarding framing of our indian constitution for an independent india and second important task here is regarding the role should be played as a legislature okay as a role of legislature second one here is framing of our constituents okay our constitution so uh, the constituent assembly of india which mainly acted as our first parliament of independent india so this this might be the one prelims question so which of the following acted as a first parliament of independent india that is our constituent assembly so constituent assembly of india which mainly acted as our first parliament of independent india so our constituent assembly had performed the number of functions regarding the provincial parliament of india okay so when it mainly acted as provincial parliament that is a time gap or interval between the time of our constitution was enforced and the day the new parliament was formed after the first general elections so between this time framework our constituent assembly which mainly acted as provincial parliament of india okay so after this general elections mainly done okay from that time i mean since then in this seven and half decades of this religious journey, of this glorious journey our constitution has not only upheld the hopes and aspirations of 135 crore population but our constitution also acted as an unwavering beacon of light and at and it also acted as a guide uh, guiding path of building of our great and resilient country so this is the importance of our constitution okay so in this context now we the people now we the people 
we need to ensure that whatever the institutions that are present whatever the governance structure is present and we need to ensure there is a participation of population should be there okay that will be helpful for developmental journey especially different sections of society like women scheduled caste scheduled tribes and even other marginalized sections they need to participate okay they need to participate in our governance and as well as institutions such that we need to become the equal parts equal partners in our growth history or growth story so our parliament has been a being a playing a pivotal role in all round development of nation and we also came up with adapting of many parliamentary devices for example for example we are will be having number of parliamentary motions uh, for example we will be having a question hour we will be having uh, parliamentary privileges so these are the some important devices that we are mainly incorporated in our constitution and these uh, parliamentary devices that will be very much helpful in free and fair discussions and dialogues in the parliament and these devices they have enabled our members to raise the concerns of people and they are going to have proper discussions and even there will be the government attentions that is mainly seen here so in this way so these parliamentary device that we have adapted that will ensure the transparency and as well as accountability of executive as well okay so here finally author says that it is also the time in the journey of our nation to take stock and we need to revive our laws we need to review our laws actually these laws which are mainly enacted during our pre independence era so time has been changed and we are facing some new challenges so according to that new challenges we need to also review the laws and need to come home, come uh, with the, some amendments as well so this is the gist of this topic and i hope it is very much clear now let us try to see next topic it is it is regarding this for a civic solidarity so this article which is mainly talking about chekmas or hajong people they are mainly fighting for their citizenship so this article will be again important from gs paper to under polity so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so central theme mainly says that the chekmas or hajong people they deserve citizenship not a racial profiling so there is a need of a citizenship for this check mass and as plus hajongs they do not require this racial profiling so if you see this image actually i did some research regarding to incorporate as many images as possible such that that will be helpful for you to understand the concept and even that will be helpful for your presentation in your mains answer so actually here we have this chittagong hill tracts and here we have this lushai hills in mizoram so what happened during 1960s because of some construction of one dam so because of that the people who are present in this areas they are dislocated so because of this check mass they came to india via this lushai hills and they mainly present in some refugee camps they are mainly located in the subansari lohit and as well as tirap areas so after that what happened this north east frontier okay that is north east frontier which mainly which mainly uh, uh, which mainly renamed as arunachal pradesh okay and it made union territory and later it got its statehood so now here arunachal pradesh which is mainly refusing to provide citizenship for this people so this is the issue here so if you are talking about chekma and hajong okay chekma and hajong a brief history so if you are talking about chekmas and hajong so these chekmas who are these chekmas first of all so these are buddhist tribes so chekmas are buddhist tribes who mainly who mainly fled from this chittagong hill tracts in erstwhile east pakistan okay so they were mainly displaced because of some hydel project power project and if you are talking about this hajongs hajongs are hindu tribes chekmas are buddhist and hajongs are hindus actually these hindu tribes mainly left the mainland east pakistan because of religious persecutions they mainly faced there and they started settling in mizoram meghalaya and as well as assam region so later on these chekmas and hajongs they entered india through 
थ्रू प्रेजेंट डे मिजोराम त्रिपुरा इन 1964 टू 1969 एंड अबाउट 14,000 अबाउट अप्रॉक्सीमेटली 15,000 पीपल दे वर सेटल इन दिस नॉर्थ ईस्ट फ्रंटियर नाउ इट इज अरुणाचल प्रदेश एंड नियरली अबाउट 1.8 लाख चेकमास दे लिव इन मिजोराम त्रिपुरा असम मेघालय एंड वेस्ट बेंगाल ओके एंड इन दोज एरियाज दे गॉट एस टी कैटेगरी स्केड्यूल्ड ट्राइब कैटेगरी एंड दीज चेक मास दे हैव बीन देर लॉन्ग बिफोर इनफ्लेक्स फ्रॉम दिस ईस्ट पाकिस्तान एंड लेटर ऑन वॉट हैपन इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी सिक्स इन रेस्पॉन्स टू द रेट पिटिशन विच इज मेनली फाइल्ड बाय नेशनल ह्यूमन राइट्स कमीशन सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट रूल्ड दैट चेक मास एंड हेजोंग्स कैन नॉट बी एविक्टेड फ्रॉम अरुणाचल प्रदेश एंड द सिटीजनशिप शुड बी गिवन फॉर दोज पीपल एंड वॉट हैपन फ्रॉम About 4,637 Chekmas and Hezong refugees, they applied for citizenship, and this is still in pending. But here, some descendants of refugees they got government ID. For example, they got like passports and voter card. Okay, based on the fact that they born in India, and about 1,497 Chekmas and Hezong people, they were included even on the electoral rolls. For the first time in 2004, so later on, recently in 2015, Supreme Court gave a judgment, and this judgment is in the favor of citizenship uh, for this Chekmas and as well as Hejongs. So Supreme Court ruled that they are eligible for this citizenship here. And the issue of citizenship concerns only the refugees, of whom there are only around six thousand alive. Okay. And what happened now? Arunachal Gom Pradesh government says that we are not going to provide citizenship, and they will be dislocated. Okay, they will be sent out from the Arunachal Pradesh. So this is the issue here. And if you see this image, so these are the people who are mainly belongs to this Chekma community. So now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context here, National Human Rights Commission, which mainly came up with uh, giving some direction or it mainly came up with the direction uh, regarding ministry of home affairs and as well as arunachal pradesh government to submit what is the action report that mainly taken okay taken against racial proofing and as well as relocation of this chekmas nationals well hazong communities in the northeastern state so national human rights commission which mainly asked Ministry of Home Affairs and as well as Arunachal Pradesh government regarding they need to submit action of uh, submit the action uh, taken report against this racial profiling and as well as relocation of this people. Actually, these people, these people they mainly fled from the Chittagong Hill Tracts that was present in as well East Pakistan that is in the present day Pakistan, present day Bangladesh. Okay, that time from East Pakistan. they mainly fled during this 1960s but here east pakistan got independence to this bangladesh liberation wall of 1971 and now it is present bangladesh actually these people they mainly lost their land because of construction of this kaptai dam okay uh, it mainly it was mainly built in 1960s so because of loss of their land so these people they mainly sought asylum in india and they were settled in relief camps in arunachal pradesh as i showed you in map since then they have been well integrated in the villages and they started uh, they started their livelihoods in southern in southern eastern parts of the state recently in 2015 supreme court directed the state to grant them um, citizenship but till now it is not had been implemented and even in the judgment of 1996 court stated that the life and the personal liberty of every chek mas who are residing within the state shall be protected and now it is in news because recently arunachal pradesh chief minister came up with the announcement that they are going to relocate these chek mas outside the state and they will be coming up with census of communities okay so because of this we can say there is a racial profiling of these two communities that is mainly seen So as you all know, especially the states which are present in this northeastern India, 
so they are mainly facing issues regarding these tribes because in these areas they are mainly dominant with hills and we can see different types of tribal people they are mainly present in this northeastern states so it is very much difficult especially for the state government to deal and to come up with a balance regarding interest of native tribal communities and as well as uh, some refugees and as well as progeny of their refugees so already you know that in our indian constitution there are fundamental rights so states they need to protect tribal people and they need to protect their habitat and as well as livelihood and culture so because of this whenever we are going for uprooting of so and so tribal area from their homelands and whenever uh, we are mainly want to relocate them out of the state then that will mainly violate their right of uh, diversity of culture and economy and will be also the violation of the rights okay so because of this what is the need the need here is we need to come up with a dialogue between the state government civil societies and as well as the chekma and hajong communities etc and we need to address the issues regarding implementation of this uh, citizenship okay and the important step it is taken by this national human rights commission it is one of the welcome step so this is just of this topic and i hope it is very much clear now let us try to see next topic title says towards low emissions growth so this article it is important from our environment and ecology which mainly comes under our gs paper 3 and this topic it is exclusively important from our mains so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so central theme says that for climate and development sake india needs to bring back industrial policy only differently this time so this article says that there is a need to come up with industrial policy because when you want to move towards development it will be having some negative impact on our environment so we need to come up with some sort of balance between this development and climate so there is a need of industrial policy so now let us try to see this topic actually this topic which is mainly talking about a green industrialization strategy that we need to follow so as you all know that climate change it is a one of the important challenge that we are mainly facing so because of this a uh, climate change we are seeing there are several impacts of climate change for example if you are talking about india uh, and if you are talking about recent volcanic eruption Uh, in this tonga islands that led to tsunami like waves etc and that caused a large uh, range uh, range of uh, destruction and even in india there is increasing of sea level rise so because of this increasing of sea level rise the capital city of indonesia which is mainly going to be shifted and next one here is because of increasing of sea level so most of the coastal area will be inundated and the people who are living in that coastal area that will be they will be moving towards inwards said that that will leads to socio economic circumstances and we experience glacial lake outburst floods and there is increasing of glacial lake melting of these glaciers and we can see landslides mudslides so these are the some events which are mainly associated with this climate change right so if you want to address this global challenge that is climate change so without global effort Uh, without rapidly reducing of our greenhouse emissions the average global temperatures are likely to be exceeded 2 degrees centigrade with the current policies in place okay so without taking any immediate effort so we cannot decrease this greenhouse gas emissions such that we cannot decrease our temperature that is 2 degrees centigrade so this is the current policies uh, target here so if you are talking about many developing countries and even developed countries they came up with this pledge of net zero or carbon neutrality at this cop 26 right so different countries came up with different targets like 2050 2060 china came up with 2060 and even india came up with this target by 2070 and if you are talking about india we are facing number of problems like uh, there is a huge youth unemployment and there is large amount of hunger poverty they are mainly seen okay and if we want to go for development we need to attract investments and we need to go for industrialization urbanization so this will be having some negative impacts on our climate so if you are talking about india's economic growth in the last 3 decades which is mainly led by service sector okay 
and because of this uh, growth which is mainly coming from the service sector so we are seeing there is a very less emissions from the service sector but in coming decades mainly to address the challenges regarding unemployment poverty hunger we need to move towards investment led manufacturing intensive global uh, growing uh, growing growth model so we need to move towards this manufacturing so whenever we need to move towards manufacturing that will lead to increasing of global emissions or greenhouse emissions so if you are talking about this carbon neutrality what is a carbon neutrality so amount of carbon dioxide which is released into atmosphere the same amount of carbon dioxide that need to be absorbed this concept is called as carbon neutrality so what it means to be carbon neutral so first of all we need to try to decrease this carbon emissions and the remaining emissions they need to be absorbed by using some technologies so this is called as zero emissions or carbon neutrality so our prime minister mainly came with announcement that india is going to achieve this carbon neutrality by 2070 so it is one of the important um, step that we can say right it is one of the welcome step but if you are talking about when you want to achieve this target we need to have short term we need to have medium term long term guiding strategies such that we can go for ensuring of maximizing of developmental gains in this transition so in this context what is the need so we need green industrialization strategy and this strategy needs a uh, mainly the combination of laws policy instruments and implementing institutions to steer its decentralized economic activities and we need to go for becoming climate friendly and resilient resilient uh, resilient thing so whatever the strategy that we need to come so this strategy should contains laws policy instruments and even we need to go for proper implementation okay and we need to go for attracting of private sector investments especially when we want to uh, control or when we want to achieve our goal of carbon neutrality we need technology so in that technology we can attract private investments in this technologies okay and we need to industrialize under the climate constraints okay and we need to provide some policy support to deploy renewable energy for example solar energy wind energy tidal energy geothermal energy etc and we need to come up with industrial policy so we need to have some industrial policy efforts to increase the domestic manufacturing of renewable energy technology right and we also need academic research academic research is very very important such that it will be uh, it will be knowing about what is the local innovation capacities and it will be also helpful for creation of job opportunities as well so if we are talking about some case studies for example china china it mainly excelling in this techno industrial industry it mainly came up with this techno industrial policy strategy and this strategy which is mainly focusing on research and development manufacturing deployment of solar and wind technologies okay and it is mainly becoming a global competitor to produce clean energy technologies as well okay and china also created more jobs in manufacturing and uh, manufacturing solar and wind components okay so not only china even song even korea korea also came up with this green growth strategy and us also came up with this endless frontier act which mainly passed in senate in 2021 and they are mainly focusing on research and development investments for future technologies etc here and they also came up with the recent decarbonization modeling studies and they are mainly focusing on batteries green hydrogen carbon capture storage technologies etc here and we can also move towards that direction so here if you see india so india may have lost the buzz in terms of catching up on solar uh, photovoltaic innovations technologies that is mainly needed to decarbonize the transport and industrial sector but here even though we are mainly came with some steps regarding this production linked in, in uh, incentive scheme and at our atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan and we are mainly going in a right direction for localizing of clean energy manufacturing activities and we are mainly aligning regarding existing research and development investments with technology needed for green industrialization etc so what is the way forward so way forward here is we need to focus on india's energy transition okay and we need to extract economic and as well as employment rents from decarbonization 
and we should not succumb in this international pressure okay and we should not postpone our investment in this decarbonization technologies here we need to come up with capitalizing of opportunities and we need to create wealth through green industrialization and finally we should follow a path where we need to negotiate carbon space to grow and we need to go for pushing against counterproductive doubility or trade litigations regarding this decarbonization technologies and we need to focus on this research and development investments so this is a gist of this topic and i hope it is very much clear now let us try to see next topic it is regarding center to remind states again of ias cadre rules so already you know what is the background so first of all let us try to see this infographic so here Depart uh, department of personal and training had sent a revised proposal to all states on january 12th and this revised proposal which mainly seeking for their opinion on proposal to amend rule 6 to proposal to amend rule 6 regarding deputy deputation of cadre officers of ias cadre rules 1954 so out of this seven states that have said yes okay so those states include haryana manipur madhya pradesh tripura up gujarat and arunachal pradesh and five states that have said no they include odisha meghalaya jharkhand rajasthan west bengal and three states that convert their opposition directly kerala tamil nadu and telangana so now let us try to see what is the context and what is the background and what are the proposed amendments so this will be helpful for our revision don't be get bored so whenever i am discussing any topic that will be helpful for your revision itself so if you see context it mainly says that department of personal and training sent and the remainder to states to respond to its proposal to amend indian administrative services ies cadre rules 1950, 1954 it mainly deals with IS officers, IPS officers and Indian Forest Service officers. Could be deputed to in union government and ministries without necessarily taking state governments not. Okay, so this is the tussle between center and as well as this IS cadre rules between states. So if you're talking about background, so recently our department of personal and training wrote to the state that Union government proposes some amendments to Rule 6 of IAS cadre rules 1954. So under this amendments, Union government will get overriding powers to transfer IAS officers, IPS officers through center deputation. Okay. So because of this overriding power, it is mainly removing uh, the power of state government to take approval. Okay. Central government need not take approval from the state governments for transferring of this IAS and IPS officers. And if you are talking about what are the proposed amendments. So if you are focusing on this proposed amendments, if the state government delays postings at a state cadre officer to the center, does not give effect to central government's decision within the specific time. Okay. So state government, if it is delaying the posting regarding the state cadre officer for this center, okay, within a specific time, the officer shall stand relieved from the cadre from the date as uh, may be specified by the central government. And this one is central will decide the actual number of officers to be deputed to central government. So it is having overriding powers. In case of any disagreement between the central and as well state, the matter shall be decided by central government. Okay. And this is also an overriding power. And in specific situations where service services of cadre officers are required by central government in public interest the state shall give effect to decisions within a specific time specific specified time so these are some proposed amendments now let us try to see next question next article it is regarding general rawat kalyan get padma vibhushan so padma shri awards are mainly coming under the civilian awards so in 2021 we saw one question regarding awards so please uh, let us not to take any chance so let us try to discuss this topic as well Statil says our general uh, Vipin Rawat India's first CDS that is chief of defense staff recently he died in air crash 
and former UP Chief Minister Kalyan Singh, who headed the state during this Babri Masjid demolition, they were selected for this Padma Vibhushan on the eve of Republic Day. Okay, so this Padma Vibhushan, which mainly comes into the part of a Padma series of awards. And not only these two people, but there are several people who are nominated, okay, who are going to get these awards. So the names are given in this article, that is not much important. So this is an image of award. This is Padma Vibhushan. So it is having four petals like thing. And Padma Bhushan which is having three petals, three big petals. And Padma Shri which have only five petals. There is no subsidiary petals which are present in this Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan. Okay. And if you are talking about these awards. So the Padma Awards are announced annually. That is every year on this Republic Day. So it mainly instituted in 1954, it is one of the highest civilian honors of India. If you are talking about objective, so the award seeks to recognize achievements in all fields of activities of disciplines where an element of public service is involved. If you are talking about categories, there are three categories, Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan, Padma Shri. Padma Vibhushan is the highest in the hierarchy of these Padma awards. So in which disciplines these awards will be given? In fields like art, social work, public, uh, public affairs, science and engineering, trade and industry, medicine, literature, education, sports, civil service, etc. So this is just of this topic and apart from this there are two articles which are important. So you already know that between Russia and Ukraine there is something which is happening. Okay. So because of this Russia which mainly launches new military exercises near this Ukraine border. So I will be giving you homework, please devise what is the issue between Russia and Ukraine and you have to open your atlas and see the geography of this Ukraine border as well. Our next topic is regarding slash fuel tax. So as you all know that upcoming budget which is going to come up in February, okay, so upcoming budget of 2022-23 should include higher allocation for this MG Narega, that is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee scheme already you know that there is a there is a, a fund crunch that is mainly seen in this uh, mg narega scheme because of increasing of demand for this mg narega scheme right so because of this this article says that in this budget they need to give a much a much allocation for this mg narega scheme okay so you can refer what is this mg narega scheme what is this fuel tax and what is this crystal already we discussed this topic in our earlier lectures and now let us try to see expression for this yesterday's questions. First question is regarding migration. Migration is an unavoidable worldwide phenomenon. Which of the following are not push factors for rural to urban migration? So if you have come across this migration, you will be having push factors and as well as pull factors. Push factors means the place you are present. So those situations you, that are leading to push out of that village. Pull factors means that is attracting. First one is unemployment. Because of unemployment, you are going outside. Health and education facilities. And next one here is monsoon vagaries. Next one is caste disabilities. So correct option here is health and education facilities. Okay, health and education facilities, uh, they are not much not much uh, push factors they are pull factors because of good health facilities good education facilities you are mainly attracted towards that city so if you're talking about this image you can see what are the push factors and what are the pull factors push factors are unemployment not safe lack of services the next one is poverty crop failure drought war and civil unrest hazards isolation and pull factors includes potential jobs, safer environment, better services like health, education, greater wealth, fertile lands, lot of food, political security, friends and family. And now let us try to see next question. It is regarding our solar system. So first one is Pluto. It is the largest war planet revolving around the sun. But the first one is Aries. So you can eliminate this statement. So you can eliminate first statement. And every planet except Venus rotates from west to east. 
but not only venus but also uranus you can eliminate this so that option will be three only okay now let us try to see today's questions before seeing today's questions i want to make a small announcement on this platform so if you want to clear upsc if you want to clear upsc i will strongly suggest you to join prelims test series and as well as mains are certain course that we launched in this rathor's is academy so in this prelims test series we are providing 30 tests which include csat and as well as gs so that will be helpful to analyze where you stand and whether you are going in the right way or not after once you join this prelims test series we are going to give you a number of tips and next one is mains answer writing course so one important thing that you need to realize realize here is if you want to see your name in final list you need to focus on this means so if you're performing well in this means finally you can see your name in your final list for sure so means it is one of the important deciding factor whether your name will be there in final list or not and one more thing i want to say here is so already you might be knowing that within three hours of time you have to write 20 answers so you'll be getting an average seven to seven and a half minutes for one question. So to answer those questions within this limit of time. So you need to excel this answer writing skills. Right in this course, we will be giving you weekly targets of timetable. And in this weekly syllabus, we will be giving you daily one question so that it will be not be a heavy burden on you people. And on every Sunday, there will be case study or essay writing practice. I already know that essay and case studies are very very important so there will be also practice on essay and case studies and we will be giving you one-to-one -one mentorship there will be evaluation we will provide you model answer and one-to-one -one mentorship so in this way you can finally improve your answer writing for sure and next one is we also launched an entire foundational course for upsc for gs and in this foundational course, there will be like more than 700 hours of video recorded classes will be given for you. And we are focusing on this conceptual clarity. So this will be absolutely, absolutely helpful. Okay. Because the recent trend of UPC had been changed because you're not asking fact-based questions. Now they are, they started asking this uh, analysis based questions to answer those questions. Conceptual clarity is very important. And next one here is. If you want to take individual courses like economy, history, geography, science and technology, environment and ecology, disaster management, you can take those individual courses as well. The cost is very, very affordable and you can't get this low price anywhere in the country with the concept of clarity. We are not compromising on our content. And the details of this course are given in the description box. And if you want to watch uh, demo videos, link is given in the description box. Please visit our website and there you can watch three demo videos for free of cost. Okay. And if you want to talk to me directly, you can call to this number 8074765513. I am the Academy Director of the Stathors IS. And now let us try to see today's questions. So first question is based on Earth's internal structure. So there are different discontinuities within the Earth's internal structure where which are the discontinuities that have been incorrectly matched. So here you need to identify incorrect match. So first one is Mohoric discontinuity boundary between core and mantle. Second one is Gutenberg discontinuity between crust and mantle. Conrad uh, discontinuity is between this located at a depth of 15 to 20 kilometers from edge surface. You have to choose the incorrect match and next question is regarding seismic waves that is earthquake waves so first one here is primary waves totally disappear in the core region revealing that outer core is made up of liquid secondary waves shows that shows changes in its speed as it travels from the magma chamber to lithosphere region indicating there is a difference in density the speed of secondary wave is highest inside the earth's core region indicating higher density of core region so you have to choose the correct statements so if you have gone to your ncrts of geography then you can easily answer this question so these are the today's questions try to answer these questions and there is no negative marking here please try to give your answers that will be helpful to boost your confidence as well 
and one more thing here is if there is any need of changes in our hindu analysis please try to give your suggestions in comment box so by this i'm concluding today i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathod's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and don't forget to enroll to these courses by this i'm concluding thank you so much